الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا صدق الله مولانا العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحاب سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا خير خلق الله Honorable, distinguished, ulamai kiram, sadat kiram, mashayikh izam, respected elders, brothers in Islam. Before I say a few words on my given topic, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the organizers of this most important, significant event, particularly the young, charismatic, energetic, Hazrat Allama Imam Muhammad Adil Shahzad Sahib. Alhamdulillah, for the last few years, has been working tirelessly to promote the aqaid of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, not only nationally, but also in other countries around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his efforts and the efforts of all of those who have contributed in making this conference a success. Respected brothers in Islam, the topic which I have been given is to discuss the dalail and proofs pertaining to khatm e found in the glorious Qur'an other than the obvious verse مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ That's the clear categorical absolute text in Arabic known as Nas and our Shaykh, one of my teachers used to say that a simple definition of Nas he used to say Nas wo hoti hai jis me kulu banda Nas na sake so Nusus in the glorious Quran are many and plenty but I want to give the younger listeners some context as to this tremendous fitna known as the Qadiyani fitna. Inshallah, ulama will elaborate on this fitna and the significance of this fitna. Our mashayikh, our akabir, as you've been hearing, have worked tirelessly for over a century against this fitna, but yet, this fitna still remains in our midst. Nobody has eliminated the fitna. Perhaps this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A test for our iman. A test for our love and muhabba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how much we are willing to sacrifice for this cause. Brothers in Islam, Without going into any particular details and singling out ayat in the quran -e kareem let's look at the fact that the whole Qur'an itself, the whole of the Qur'an is significant proof upon the finality of prophethood of Rasulullah You may ask, how is that? Answer is simple. It's a verse which we hear recited often. Particularly in the month of Ramadan, 
إنا نحن نزلنا الذكر وإنا له لحافظون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have sent down the zikr and we will protect this zikr. No one will be able to distort the quran kareem No one will be able to tamper with the divine text of the quran kareem Now, how is this a proof? How is this a dalil? Because previously, when anbiya kiram and the messengers were given divine text, they were not given this task of preserving the text of their particular sahifa or their particular book as is understood from the words of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not take this upon himself that he's going to protect and preserve the Injil, the Zabur, the Tawrat and this is the reason why people were able to manipulate the divine texts this is why the Injil was tampered with the Tawrat was tampered with the Zabur was tampered with. But when it came to the glorious Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this duty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the word duty is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this upon himself that he will preserve and he will protect the Holy Quran from any tampering. And this is the dalil that there will be no, because the prophets came, يُحَرِّفُونَ الْكَلِمَ وَمَوَادِعِهِ People used to tamper and the anbiya kiram would come and they would restore the message of the deen and they would bring the message back to its original form but when the quran is protected and protected until yawm al qiyamah there is no need for any other prophet who's going to come and rectify things so the quran as a whole is also dalil and proof upon the finality of the prophethood of our beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam very quickly the verse of the quran which i recited surah al maida verse number three a very clear and categorical verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. On this day, I have completed for you your religion. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And I have completed my favor upon you. Wa raditu lakum al-islam adina. And I have chosen Islam as a deen for you. So when the religion is perfect, is complete, and cannot be added to, then there is no need for any other prophet who's going to come and he's going to make a contribution or he's going to make any change to anything because the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete. Many verses of the Quran In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says that the believers are those who believe in what was revealed to you, O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and what was revealed before you. There's no mention of any revelation coming after the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brothers in Islam, it's important where we have this passion and this jazba and these nare are also very important. But in these conferences, we should try to utilize these opportunities and make a note, to take a note and take something back from this conference. From every bayan, from every, from every speech, if you were to take one point, inshallah, at the end of the conference, you may have 20 points, inshallah, ta'ala, and you would have increased in your knowledge. So let's not just make this about nare and about, you know, showing passion. There's a room for passion. We, we should be passionate. Of course, this is a masala, khatmi nabood, which is significant, especially in the subcontinent, in indo Park. But at the same time, we're living in a time and age where people want to reason. People want to be rational. People want proof. You know, these Qadianis, they will recite verses of the Quran to you. And I can quite confidently say that if I was to recite a verse from the Quran to you and give you a dalil and proof from the Quran, which the Qadianis use, vast majority of people will have no answer. Apart from becoming passionate and becoming aggressive. This is not the day and this is not the place of aggression in the UK. We have to live by the time. The Qadiyanis, they present to you, and I'm sure, inshallah, the ulama will tackle this masala. They recite a verse from Surah Al-A'raf. Ya Bani Adam, O oh, children of Adam, Imma ya'tiyannakum rusulum minkum. If Rasuls came to you. Now the Qadiyanis say that this is addressing the whole of humanity. Ya Bani Adam. Categorical, clear language. O oh, children of Adam, Imma ya'tiyannakum rusulum minkum. If Rasuls came to you. Now, Adam, Adamiyat has not stopped. Stopped. Adam alayhi salam, his awlad is continuing until Yawm al-Qiyamah. 
So they will recite this verse and say, what is your answer? How do you answer this question? So we need to have some ammunition. We need to have some legs to stand on. Yes, of course, Khatmi Nabuwat is a clear masala. But you know, there are millions and millions of Qadianis around the world. Millions around the world. It's not a fitna which is decreasing because the fitna and the reality of this fitna is that these people are using the very same text that we are using. They're using ayat of the Quran, they're using ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for a simple mind, it, the simple mind will be confused. It will be bamboozled. Somebody's reciting Quran saying, give me the interpretation. And if you only show passion and jazba in return, I'm sorry, but you've lost the argument. If you do not have an answer, any rational answer, then you've lost the debate, lost the argument. In a time of ilhad, where people are turning away from Islam, people turning away from religion, questioning Islam. And they have many questions, significant questions. And if we are not able to provide the answers, then we're losing out. So let's make this conference a serious conference. And any alim, any scholar who comes, and I encourage myself, Alhamdulillah, I've learned from the previous two speeches, the Urdu speech, the English speech. Before me, I have picked up something, Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, the speeches that I will listen to after myself, inshallah, I will take something for myself, for my benefit. And we all have smartphones. Let's make positive use of the smartphone. Why not just make a quick note at the end of every speech? This is what I learned. Those two or three words that you jot down, you write down, on your smartphone, inshallah, will trigger memories. And this conference will remain alive in your memories for a long time, inshallah. We've had many, many khatm and conferences where people have come, shouted, and not given enough dalail and evidence to our masses that we find ourselves handicapped when it comes to any serious intel intelligent debate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our passion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our brother Imam Adil Muhammad Shahz uh, Shahzad Sahib. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward his, his friends and all his associates and people who participated in uh, organizing this conference. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah.